Hello guys, welcome back to our lecture series. So in this video lecture, we will be looking at the first type of volumetric analysis and this is acid-based titration. For the first part of lecture 5b, I will be teaching you how to construct titration curves. All right, so these are the learning outcomes for this video lecture. So at the end of this video lecture, you should be able to construct titration curves for the four major types of acid-based titrations as outlined in this slide. And secondly, if you are given a titration curve for a weak acid strong base or a weak base strong acid titration, you should be able to identify the regions, give the pKa or pKb for the substance titrated, and finally to discuss the feasibility of titration. In acid-based titrations, we have what we call a standard solution. So standard solutions are normally used as titrants, and these are usually strong acids and strong bases. Standard titrant acids include dilute solutions of hydrochloric acid, perchloric acid, and sulfuric acid, while the standard titrant bases usually are dilute solutions of sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Now, standard solutions are called standard solutions because they undergo the process of standardization or knowing the exact concentration of the solution. So during standardization, the solutions are titrated against primary standards. These are examples of primary standards. We have potassium acid phthalate, sodium oxalate, and sodium bicarbonate. There are four major types of acid-based titrations, and we will discuss each of this in this lecture video. We have strong acid titrated with a strong base, a strong base titrated with a strong acid, a titration of a weak base with a strong acid, and lastly, the titration of a weak acid with a strong base. Always remember that the titrants are dilute solutions of strong acids and strong bases. The equivalence point is the point in a titration where the amount of the titrant added is enough to completely neutralize the analyte solution. The moles of the titrant, which is also the standard solution, equal to the moles of the solution with the unknown concentration. This is also known as the stoichiometric point because it is where the moles of the acid are equal to the amount needed to neutralize the equivalent moles of the base. Remember that the equivalence point is not the same as the endpoint of titration. The endpoint refers to the point at which the indicator changes color. More often than not, the color change occurs after the equivalence point has already been reached. Now, using the endpoint to calculate the equivalence point naturally introduces error. In plotting an acid-based titration curve, the x-axis units are always the reagent or the titrant volume, while the y-axis can be a pH or a pOH. A typical acid-based titration curve looks like the one shown in this slide, and we can describe this as a sigmoidal curve. The first type of acid-based titration that we will look at is a titration of a strong acid with a strong base. For example, if we are titrating HCl versus sodium hydroxide, suppose, for example, that our analyte is hydrochloric acid and the titrant is sodium hydroxide, then we will obtain a typical titration curve as shown in this slide. For strong acid and strong base titration, the equivalence point is always at pH 7. Data points that are before the equivalence point belong to the pre-equivalence point region. In this region, we have excess of the analyte, which is HCl. Data points that are obtained after the equivalence point belong to what we call the post-equivalence point region. So in this region, we have sodium hydroxide in excess. In the succeeding slides, I will teach you how to determine the concentration of the hydronium ions and calculate the pH for each region. All right, so as an example, we look at the determination of pH changes when hydrochloric acid, which is our analyte, is titrated by sodium hydroxide, which is our standard solution or the titrant. The reaction for sodium hydroxide and HCl is shown in this slide. At the start of titration, that is before any addition of the titrant, we have two sources of hydronium ions. 
So the first source of hydronium ion is coming from the autodissociation of water, and the second source of hydronium ion is from the ionization of the strong acid. Since KW or the water dissociation constant is very small, the hydronium ion concentration is also expected to be small. Then we use the hydronium ion concentration from the dissociation of the strong acid. For any volumes of the titrant that was added before the equivalence point, the hydronium ion concentration is simply calculated as the remaining ions after the reaction with the addition of the base. In other words, it is simply the original moles of the acid subtracted to the moles of the added base divided by the total volume. In this case, the total volume is equal to the original volume of the solution plus the volume of the added base. Once we get the molar hydronium ion concentration, we can simply plug this to our pH equation to get the pH value of the analyte solution at the pre-equivalence point region. At the equivalence point region, all of the acid has reacted with the titrant base. Again, for a strong acid and a strong base titration, or for a strong base or strong acid titration, the pH at the equivalence point is just equal to 7. Hence, we say that the solution is neutral. In our titration curve, the equivalence point region is the steepest portion of the curve. After the equivalence point, we now have an excess of the titrant. In this region, we can readily compute the hydroxide ion concentration. The excess titrant can be calculated from the moles of the added base minus the moles of the original acid divided by the total volume. After determining the concentration of the hydroxide ions, we can readily compute the hydronium ion concentration using the KW expression, which is KW is equal to the hydronium ion concentration multiplied to the hydroxide ion concentration. Once we get the hydronium ion concentration, we can simply plug this to our pH equation to calculate or determine the pH at the post-equivalence point region. So let's try to apply the concepts and the equations that I discussed in this problem. Consider the titration of a 50.0 mL of a 0 0.100 molar hydrochloric acid using a titrant of 0 0.200 molar sodium hydroxide. Calculate the pH at the start of the titration, after 10 mL of the added titrant, after 25 mL of the added titrant, and after 30 ml of the added titrant. Before you do any calculations, the first thing that you need to do is to determine the volume of the base or the titrant that is needed to reach the equivalence point. Once we know this volume, we can simply identify which among the given volumes belong to the pre-equivalence point region and which ones belong to the post-equivalence point region. Again, at the equivalence point, the moles of the acid is equal to the moles of the base. That is, the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid is equal to the molarity of the base multiplied to the volume of the base. Take note that the volume of the base is the same as the volume at the equivalence point as shown in this slide. Now, using this equation, we can determine the volume of the base or the titrant that we need to reach the equivalence point, and this is 25.00 mL. This means that all the volumes of the titrant added before 25 mL belong to the pre-equivalence point region, while volumes of the titrant added after 25.00 mL belong to the post-equivalence point region. We are ready to calculate the pH for each region. At the start of titration, that is, no titrant is added to the solution yet. The hydronium ion concentration is simply equal to the concentration of the hydrochloric acid, which is 0.100 molar. Substituting this to our pH equation will yield the pH of 1.00. At 10 ml of the added titrant, we are at the pre-equivalence point region. For the specific example, the chemical species that are in excess is the hydrochloric acid. We can compute the excess molar hydrochloric acid concentration by subtracting the original moles of HCl with the moles of the added base divided by the total volume. In this example, the moles of the acid is computed by multiplying the concentration of the acid to its volume. And the moles of the base is computed by multiplying the concentration of the base to its volume added. Then we divide this to the total volume. This will give us a molar HCl concentration 
of 0 0.0500 molar. Substituting this to our pH equation will give us a pH of 1.30. This is how you compute for the pH of a solution of the free equivalence point region for strong acid titrated by a strong base. Remember that in a pre-equivalence point region, the addition of the base increases the pH gradually until we obtain a sharp increase of pH at the equivalence point region. At 25 ml, we reach the equivalence point. The pertinent equilibrium here is the auto-ionization of water. Recall that we can calculate the hydronium ion concentration from the auto-ionization of water. From the KW expression, we can calculate the hydronium ion concentration to be 1.0 times 10 raised to negative 7 molar. Substituting this to our pH expression yields a pH of 7.00. Now, for volumes of sodium hydroxide greater than the equivalence point, the pH is determined by the concentration of excess hydroxide ions. We can calculate the hydroxide ion concentration using the equation as shown in this slide. The computed hydroxide ion concentration is now equal to 0.0125 molar. We can readily compute the hydronium ion concentration from the KW expression, and this will give us a hydronium ion concentration of 8.00 times 10 raised to negative 13 molar. Substituting this to our pH equation will give us a pH of 12.10. So try to calculate the pH changes during a titration. This time your analyte is a base, which is sodium hydroxide, and a titan is a strong acid, which is hydrochloric acid. Remember the first thing that you need to do is to determine the volume of the titan, in this case is HCl, that is required to reach the equivalence point. Then, identify the volumes belonging to the pre- and post-equivalence point region. For each region, determine which chemical species in excess. For this problem, the hydroxide species are in excess at the pre-equivalence point region, while the acid is in excess at the post-equivalence point region. Again, remember that the pH at the equivalence point for a strong base versus a strong acid titration is always 7.00. So this is your self-assessment question number one. Now let's look at the titration of a weak acid by a strong base. This figure shows the general titration curve. In our case, the volume of a strong base is plotted against the pH. Before we proceed with the calculations, I will just highlight some important characteristics that are seen in all titration curves of a weak acid with a strong base. The initial pH, that is before the addition of a strong base, is higher or less acidic than the titration of a strong acid. We can also see from the figure that there is a sharp increase in pH at the beginning of titration. After the sharp increase at the beginning of the titration, the curve only changes gradually. This is because the solution is acting as a buffer. This will continue until the base overcomes the buffer capacity. In the middle of this pre-equivalence point region, the half-neutralization of the weak acid occurs. At this point, the concentration of the weak acid is equal to the concentration of its conjugate base. Therefore, our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation becomes pH is equal to pKa. This point is called the half-neutralization because half of the acid has been neutralized. At the equivalence point, the pH is greater than 7 because all of the weak acid has been converted to its conjugate base by the addition of sodium hydroxide. Now, the steep portion of the curve prior to the equivalence point is short. Then, at the post-equivalence point region, there is a gradual increase in the pH. The initial pH of the solution at the beginning of the titration is approximately that of the weak acid in water. Recall that we can write the Ka expression for the weak acid as shown in this slide, and we can easily compute for the hydronium ion concentration. Once we have the value, we can substitute this to our pH equation. You should be familiar with this type of calculation. During the pre-equivalence point, some of the weak acid are converted to its conjugate base. In this case, we have a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or what we call as a buffer. We can use the henderson hasselbalch equation to calculate the pH of the resulting buffer as shown in this slide. 
An interesting feature of the henderson hasselbalch equation is when the concentration of the weak acid is equal to the concentration of a conjugate base. The equation simply becomes pH is equal to pKa. At this point, we say that the weak acid is half neutralized. In terms of titrant volumes, the half neutralization of the weak acid occurs when we reach half of the volume to the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, all of the weak acid is neutralized and converted to its conjugate base. The pH at the equivalence point does not equal to 7. This is due to the production of the conjugate base during the titration. The resulting pH is slightly basic. Beyond the equivalence point, the excessive species are the hydroxide ion. We can calculate the amount of the hydroxide ions simply by subtracting the moles of the added base to the original moles of the weak acid. Then we divide this to the total volume to calculate for the concentration. Once we have the molar hydroxide ion concentration, we can substitute this to our KW expression in order to determine the hydronium ion concentration. We can then use our pH equation to calculate the pH at the post-equivalence point. Okay, so let's try this example. Titrate a 50.0 mL of a 0 0.100 molar acetic acid with 0 0.200 molar sodium hydroxide. Calculate the pH before the start of titration, after 10 mL of the titrant has been added, after 25 mL of the titrant has been added, and after 30 mL of the titrant has been added. Remember that the titration of a weak acid with a strong base involves the direct transfer of protons from the weak acid to the hydroxide ion. The reaction of a weak acid that is acetic acid with a strong base, which is sodium hydroxide, in this example, is a 1 is to 1 ratio. Again, just like what we did earlier, we determine the volume of the titan that is sodium hydroxide that is required to reach the equivalence point. In this example, the equivalence point is reached when we have added 25.0 ml of the titan. Therefore, all volumes below 25 ml belong to the pre-equivalence point region, while volumes added after 25 ml belong to the post-equivalence point region. We are now ready to calculate the hydronium ion concentrations and pH for each volume of the titan added. Before we begin the titration, the pH is that for a solution of 0 0.100 molar acetic acid. Because acetic acid is a weak acid, we calculate the pH using the weak acid equilibria, as I've previously mentioned. This computation should be very easy for you to carry out since we have already discussed this in Lecture 4b. Again, we use the Ka expression to determine the hydronium ion concentration, and this is 1.35 times 10 raised to negative 3 molar. The corresponding pH is 2.88. Adding sodium hydroxide converts a portion of acetic acid to its conjugate base. Therefore, in this region of our titration, we have a weak acid and its conjugate base. In other words, we have a buffer system. We can use the henderson hasselbalch equation to calculate the pH in this region of our titration curve. We have to calculate the weak acid or the acetic acid concentration and its conjugate base or the acetate before we can use the henderson hasselbalch equation. We can determine the concentration of the remaining acetic acid simply by subtracting the original moles of the acid to the amount of the base added and dividing this to the total volume. This will give me a concentration of acetic acid of 0 0.0500 molar. The conjugate base that is the acetate that was formed is equal to the amount of the added base. The concentration of the conjugate base is therefore calculated as the moles of the base added divided by the total volume of the solution. The acetate ion concentration is therefore equal to 0.033 molar. Since we know the concentration of the two species, calculating the pH is relatively straightforward. We just substitute this to our henderson hasselbalch equation. Take note that you can get the values for the pKa for weak acids in data tables in your textbook. The pH is therefore equal to 4.58. All right, so this is how you will compute for the pH of the pre-equivalence point region. You need to determine first the concentration of the weak acid and its conjugate base. 
then use the henderson hasselbalch equation to calculate for the pH. At 25 ml of the titan added, we are at the equivalence point. The moles of the acetic acid initially present and the moles of the sodium hydroxide added are identical. Because of the reaction effectively proceeds to completion, the predominant ion in this solution is the acetate, which is a quick base. To calculate the pH, we first determine the concentration of the acetate ion. This is simply computed as the mole of the added base divided by the total volume. For this example, we have 0.0667 molar. Since we have its conjugate base present at the equivalence point, the predominant equilibrium is shown here. Notice that we have the hydroxide ions in our equation. This tells us the pH at the equivalence point should be basic, that is, it should must be higher than 7. This time, we will use the Kb expression to calculate the hydroxide ion concentration. Recall that from your previous lectures, if we are given the Ka of the weak acid, you can simply calculate the Kb using the equation for Kw, that is, Kw is equal to Ka times Kb. Upon substituting the values, we have hydroxide ion concentration of 6.17 times 10 raised to negative 6 molar. You can again use the KW expression to calculate the hydronium ion concentration, and this will give you 1.62 times 10 raised to negative 9 molar. Then, you can use our pH equation, and this will give you a pH of 8.79. After the equivalence point, the titan is in excess and a titration mixture is a dilute solution of sodium hydroxide. We can calculate the pH using the same strategy as in a titration of a strong acid with a strong base. The pH now is equal to 12.11. All right, so this figure shows the summary of the titration for a weak acid, that is acetic acid, with sodium hydroxide. In this figure, take note of the different regions of the titration and the chemical species that are predominant at these regions. Okay, so these are the key equations that you will use in order to determine the pH, the hydroxide ion concentration, or the hydronium ion concentration for each region of the titration curve for a weak acid titrated with a strong base. In a weak base strong acid titration, the acid and base will react to form an acidic solution. An example shown here is a titration of hydrochloric acid into ammonia, which is a weak base. In the case of titrating a weak base with a strong acid, the pH of the base will start high and drop rapidly with additions of the acid. At the pre-equivalence point region, you have a solution containing both the weak base and its conjugate acid. So this means you have a base buffer. Again, you can compute the pH using the henderson hasselbalch equation. At the equivalence point, a conjugate acid will be produced during the titration, and then it reacts with water to form hydronium ions. So this results in a solution with a pH lower than 7. If a chemical indicator is used, methyl orange would be a good choice in this case because it changes from basic to acidic to its acidic color. Further additions of the acid will decrease the pH, and at this region, or the post-equivalence point region, the strong acid is in excess. All right, so these are the key equations that you will use in order for you to calculate the pH, the hydroxide ion concentration, the hydronium ion concentration for a titration of a weak base with a strong acid. Okay, so you can study this example for weak base titrated with a strong acid. You can refer to your reference book on how to calculate these pH values. Before you do any calculations, remember to find the volume required to reach the equivalence point. Doing so will allow you to easily identify which of these volumes will belong to the pre-equivalence point and to the post-equivalence point regions. The computations for pH are similar to the weak acid titrated with a strong base. The only difference is for you to know which species are in excess or coexisting at each region of the titration curve. Also, remember that before any addition of the titrant, with a, which is a strong acid, the solution is a weak base. So you must use the Kb expression to calculate the hydroxide ion concentration, then determine the hydronium ion concentration, and finally use our pH equation. One of the factors that affect the feasibility of titration is the effect of concentration.
Consider, for example, the titration curve A, which was obtained by using a higher concentration for the titan pembianolite than titration curve B. This figure tells us that the more concentrated the solution of the analyte in the titrant, the steeper the slope of the equivalence point region. Hence, a wider choice of indicators is available for us to give a sharp endpoint. Another factor that affects titration is the reaction completeness. Again, consider the titration of the different weak acids with 0.10 molar sodium hydroxide. The figure on the right shows the pH change in the equivalence point region becomes smaller as the acid becomes weaker. This means the reaction between the acid and the base becomes less complete and the endpoint becomes less sharp. It would be difficult to choose a suitable indicator for a diffuse equivalence point region. Aside from using chemical indicators to find the endpoint, we can also use the first and second derivatives to find the endpoints. Consider the following table. The first two columns contain experimental values for volume and pH. To compute the first derivative, each pair of volumes is average and the quantity delta pH over delta V is calculated. The delta pH is the change in pH between consecutive readings and delta V is a change in the volume between the consecutive additions. The endpoints are taken as the maxima in a first order derivative curve. The second derivative can be computed in an analogous manner. The endpoint is the volume at which the second derivative curve is zero. This figure shows a titration of a weak diprotic acid. This means that we expect to see two equivalence points. When the delta pH over the delta V is at its maximum value, which is the highest point on the graph, it represents the inflection point of the titration. The equivalence point also corresponds to the volume at which the second derivative is zero. You should already be familiar in how to construct the first and second order derivative plots for titration curves. Okay, so this is the last slide for this lecture video, and I will see you during our synchronous discussion.